What's up guys, Flaming Geek here. How to nail your jet interview part one. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare for the infamous jet interview. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. So congratulations, you made it past phase one of the application process. You worked really hard, you put hours into your application process, you were meticulous, and now you got that email telling you you made it past phase one, and you start to panic. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you're like, I knew I was gonna get in. Or maybe you're like, huh. I didn't expect that. In this video, I'm gonna give you some strategies on how to prepare for the interview. This is specifically on how I prepared for this interview, so it might not work for some people. This might not be how you like to prepare for things, but I just wanna give it a little guide, as a little guide to help you out. I know it's a very daunting process, but to this day, this interview was my favorite interview I've ever given, not just because I got into JET, but mainly because I had so much fun in the interview. So in part one, I'm gonna talk about how to begin preparing, like the foundation of your preparation for this interview. The, the series will be in three parts how to prepare based on your statement of purpose, how to answer questions, which will be part two, and part three, how to present yourself in the interview. What I did to prepare for this is, number one, I used Tofugu. Um, one of my friends who was in her first year in the JET program highly recommended the Tofugu Guide to the JET program, and I would, I would say go and check it out. I strongly encourage you to go and check it out. It is very, very helpful. It's written by someone who already did the JET program, um, who's an alumni, who's conducted JET interviews after um, post-JET as an alumni. So I've put the link in the description down below, so please go give that a check. Second, I would say is try to find someone who is already in the program. So whether that's me, feel free to message me and ask me questions, or you can go and literally look on Facebook. Just look JET 2018 or whatever year you're applying. There will be like a potential JET group there and you can check it out and you can check it out and usually um, there will be alumni in there or current jets who will provide you a lot of advice and it's very helpful so that's sort of how i went and prepared for it i didn't go onto the facebook group i already had a friend in the program so i asked her and i used her religiously when i found out i got past phase one this is, i remember it so clearly it was friday night second week of january it was 11 23 p.m I was just lying back on my couch playing some Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt when one of the loading screens came up and I went and I checked my phone and I was like, oh, let's check my email and see if I got anything. And I saw, congratulations, you got past phase one. And I was excited, but then right away my heart dropped down and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do an interview. <gasps> and I had a little internal freak out. But this is what I did. I went and broke up my preparation into weeks. I had four weeks to prepare for it. The first two weeks, what I did was I went and I reread my statement of purpose. Please do that. Chances are your statement of purpose is one of the main reasons, if not the main reason why you got granted an interview. Reread that because if you're like me, I applied and then I just decided I'm gonna forget about it until January to calm myself down. So reread your statement of purpose. Print it out and highlight, underline, or do whatever you need to do to highlight your main purpose. Reread your statement of purpose. Do it! Just do it! While you're reading this, keep these points in mind. One, what is the main purpose of JET? For the main purpose of JET, you need to remember going into this interview and while you're preparing for this interview that the main purpose of JET is in the title. Japanese Exchange and Teaching Program. You are going to Japan, you are going to exchange your culture with Japan while teaching English. Please remember that, that is very important. Look at the questions. Go back and refer to the questions that you were asked to answer in your statement of purpose. So the first one was basically, why do you want to get into JET? What is so special about Japan? What makes Japan so special that you want to 
move there, that you want to go and teach English. This can be um, elaborated based on, for me, I said history, culture, film, music, and I would more so put an emphasis on the history and language. I really like to learn languages and I really wanted to have that language acquisition. And I was fascinated with Japanese history and film. Fascinating. Think about why you want to be there. It can't just be a simple answer of, oh, I like Japanese film. Oh, I like anime. Do not bring up anime in your interview. I cannot stress that enough. Do not talk about anime. If you do need to talk about it or if it gets brought up in the interview, mention it once and that's it. I even tell people when they're writing their um, statement of purpose, just mention anime once if you really like anime. I used it in my first sentence. I said I, like Jap I had a fascination with Japanese anime and Japanese film. That was it. Second point you want to refer to is what can you offer Japan? This is very important. This has to do with the exchange element of this program. What can you give Japan? What makes you so important that if you were in this program, what would you provide the country? I mainly capitalize on my experience learning multiple languages. I'm fluent in English, French, Spanish. I know German. It officially did my Canadian sign language certification recently. So I know multiple languages. I grew up in a French school. So I know what it's like to learn a second language firsthand in school, especially from a young age. I know how difficult it is and how much you struggle. So I use that as a huge platform to say, I understand what the students are gonna go through. I know what I, I can relate to them and through relation like that, I can be a better teacher because I can provide better resources because I can approach the situation as someone who has previously gone through it. I'm sorry guys, the light is like, the light is weird. You can give back to Japan through participating in festivals, speech competitions, clubs. If you like to do YouTube or make short films, you can make short films about your time in Japan and show it to people there. You can also touch base on teaching. You can implement different techniques and teaching strategies and different games. If you're creative, talk about how you're creative and that you would integrate that into your teaching. Also look at the bigger picture. It's not just in the classroom. You want to think of what you can do outside of school. So for me, outside of school, I go to festivals. I hang out with the neighborhood kids. Um, I do a, an English club at my junior high school, although not very frequently, but at my junior high school. I play sports sports with my kids after school, stuff like that. The next thing you want to also look at is how will you promote JET after leaving the program? This is a big one. You want to think of kind of to the future. So for me, what I did was I went and looked at like how I can use this towards my career. I want to go do a PhD in forensic psychology with an emphasis on psychopathy and I want to potentially do a PhD in ch clinical child psychology. And so what I said was, I could definitely bring what I learned in the classroom, working with a different demographic background to um, students in Canada. Also, I could potentially, I was potentially looking at helping students in Japan once I'm done my degree um, to come back to Japan, help out, increase an awareness of mental illness and um, treatments and techniques for young kids. You also want to look at like if you have a Japanese club back home, you can do stuff in your Japanese club. Um, you can go and help out your consulate um, promote the JET program at conventions and you can also help potential JET applicants. So you really want to think of how you're going to answer those questions. That's a little, a really good takeoff point. Really comb through your essay. Try to think of what makes you so different. What makes you so unique? If you're a hard worker, talk about that, how you're very dedicated. And what I did was I went and I wrote it all down in a notepad, just notes and stuff. When you're done doing that, make sure you talk this over a friend, a professor, someone who can help you um, prepare for the interview. What I did was I talked to um, my friends and my parents, um, my friend who was currently in the program, and I answered those questions and tried to see if I could provide a more in-depth question. You also wanna look at what makes you unique. 
I played Quidditch in university, I played rugby, and so that's something that made me very different in the interview that I wrote on my application that I played Quidditch and I'm a geek, I love comic books and such, that, that's something that I can help relate to the students with. So you really want to look at what you can offer, that is the most important thing, I cannot stress, what you can offer and what you can take back from the program, that is very important, please think about that. Sorry guys, the uh, guy who sells uh, sweet potato is driving around <laughs> right now in the background. Also think of what you can bring from your country to show um, the people of Japan elements of your country. So I'm from Canada. So I said I would bring flags for my omiyage and stuff like that. Show them pictures and postcards and videos of the Rocky Mountains, the prairies, my university, my life in Canada, winter in Canada, because some kids in Japan, some people in Japan have never seen snow if you're really far south. I really wanted to show them elements of Western Canadian culture, so stampede, hockey, Rockies, and winter. So that's something that can put you aside. Talk about your country and how, what makes your country kind of different. My big thing was people forget about Canada and people forget about the prairies, Western Canada. Everyone always thinks of Montreal, Quebec, or Vancouver, but a lot of people forget about the prairies. So I wanted to talk about what the prairies can offer Japan. I hope that helps you out. Next week's video will be on how to answer questions the, for the teaching component of the JET interview. Do like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, guys, live long and prosper. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, go check out my last one. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat. Live long and prosper.